Welcome to the lesson on nutrition standards. Over the past 75 years, nutrition scientists have developed many different standards that kind of give guidance to the amount of foods and nutrients we need to consume to prevent nutrient deficiencies and chronic disease. Now my favorite standard out there is one where it says three to one. You eat three good foods for every one bad food. That means we need to categorize foods. Sometimes that's not too difficult. Peach, good. Soda, bad. And if we eat about three good foods for every one bad food, we generally have a pretty good diet. But other foods are not so easily defined. Something like a potato. We know it's low in fat and it's a good source of fiber, but it also tends to have a high glycemic index. So it kind of demonstrates the idea it's not the food that's good and bad, but the nutrients within it. There's no, there are no essential foods, only essential nutrients. So three to one is easy to understand, but it's not very precise. In this class, we're going to take a look at four different standards that have been developed to give a little bit more specific guidance to our intake. Now, the one that most students have heard of before this, and the first one we'll take a look at is the My Pyramid. It is the only standard out there that deals directly with food, telling you how much of different types of foods, apples, fruits, vegetables, and grains to consume. Foods are placed into groups based upon their nutrient content, but once you know the amount of calories you need, it will recommend the number of servings within each food group. Our first assignment will have you do that. Look at the amount of calories you need, and then determine how many servings within each group you're going to look at that. So the My Pyramid is very good, and it's the only one that deals directly with food. The other standards that we'll be looking at are more numbers based. And the first one of those is the Dietary Reference Intake, or the DRIs. These are some of the books related to that standard, and you can tell there's much more to this in terms of quantity of information. And sometimes it is a bit more confusing for students. We're not going to read these books, but we'll look at that standard, where, what it means, and also the subsets within it. There are subsets such as the recommended dietary allowances, the tolerable upper limits, and the acceptable macronutrient distribution range. So these are standards that deal much more with the nutrients. It deals with vitamin A and vitamin C and calcium, not oranges, apples, and potatoes. So that would be the next standard that we'll look at. After we look at that, we're going to take a look at the dietary guidelines. Now the dietary guidelines are similar to the DRIs in that they're very numbers and nutrient based. But the dietary guidelines are developed to prevent chronic disease as opposed to kind of giving us guidelines on how to prevent a nutrient deficiencies. The dietary guidelines that we'll look at in the semester from 2005, the newer ones that are coming out just this fall are the 2010, but they aren't out yet, so we're going to continue looking at the ones that are current, the 2005. The last standard that we'll look at in this class are the daily values. And daily values are the standards that, again, many of you have already seen before, because they're the standards that are used on foods. When you look at a food and a food label, the nutrient tax label, and you'll see a, a number that says a percent, it's the percent of daily values. Now, daily values are just subsets of the DRIs and the dietary guidelines. I think they've been developed so that we can look at, compare one food to the, to the next, and determine if some food is better for us or isn't as good. So the four guidelines that we'll look at, my pyramid, the DRIs, dietary guidelines, and daily values are the ones most commonly used and give us a good sense of how much of nutrients we need to prevent deficiencies and to prevent chronic disease.